All right, in this video, we're going to be learning about tangent lines, parallel lines, and derivatives. So this is another type of problem that could be best solved with derivatives. So let's take a look at it. So this kind of question often pops up when you're working with derivatives and tangent lines. You are given a function f of x, and you're also given an equation of a line. And the question is asking you to find the equation of a line that is tangent to the function and parallel to the given line. So let me just draw you kind of a quick picture of this. You could, well, that's a really unstraight line there. All right, so let me just draw you a quick picture of this. So we have a graph here, and maybe we have a function like this, and maybe we have a line like this. Okay, so we were given a function, that's the green, and we are given a line that's yellow. And we are asked to find the equation of a line that is tangent to our function and also parallel to the line. And you could actually kind of envision it, right? So here it comes right here. There it is. Just barely touches our function, hence being tangent. And that pink line is perfectly parallel to the yellow line. So that's the goal. So the problem is that we're given this green function. We're given a yellow uh, line, and we're trying to find the equation of a line that is tangent and parallel. And that's pretty hard to do, I'm not going to lie. So to answer this question it does take a few steps and a little bit of understanding. First, you need to know parallel lines have the same slope. That is something you should have known all the way back from algebra. So your line must have the same slope as the line that's given to you. You need to also find the point on the given function that produces that slope. So if I kind of draw that graph real quick here. So here's my green function. Here's my yellow line. And again, um, I know I'm changing colors a little bit here, but if I want to draw that line that's parallel and tangent, the first thing I need to find is the point of tangency. I need to find where is that point of tangency that will produce that tangent line. And um, that's, that's the tricky part, to be honest. That's the part that makes this kind of tough. But we're going to talk about how to do that. And with derivatives, it's actually not too bad. Because remember, a derivative is a formula to find the slope of a tangent line. So if I already know the slope, because I know the line I want to be parallel to, we're essentially going to work backwards. So that kind of makes this problem kind of cool. All right, so let's look at an example here so we can actually dive right into it. So I have a function, 2x squared minus 7x plus 5, and I have a line, negative 5x plus y equals negative 21. So I have a function, I have a line, and the question wants me to find an equation of the tangent line that is tangent to my function and parallel to my given line. And I always recommend taking a quick look at a picture of this because it'll make it so much easier. So what I did was I used Desmos, an online free graphing calculator, and I graphed the function and my line. And this is what I came up with. So the red is my function and the uh, blue is my line. And you could almost see the answer I'm looking for here, right? There's got to be a line out there that is parallel and tangent. And I'm, I'm trying my best to draw it. Probably something like that, right? So somewhere around here, I'm just kind of spitballing, but somewhere around here is a point, x comma f of x, and that is my point of tangency, and the, the, the slope of that line at that point is also parallel to this blue line, and that's what I'm looking for. So the trick is this, is I don't know that point of tangency. I don't know x, but I do know a formula that can find the slope if I'm given x. So remember, that's what a derivative does. A derivative, f prime of x, it takes in x and it gives you the slope of the tangent line. Well, if I know I'm parallel to this blue line, I already know the slope. So I already know the slope. What I have to do is solve for what x value produces that slope. And that's where the derivative is going to come in handy. All right, now, Hopefully, you've already watched my other videos on how to find a derivative. You do need to follow the limit process. You need to go through the differentiation, the process of finding a derivative. I'm not going to reteach that in this video. You should already know how to do that. So if you want to pause 
and go ahead and find the derivative of this function right here. Please go ahead and do so, but I'm not going to walk you through it because you should already know how. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. So if you want to pause, do so now. Okay, because the derivative f prime of x of this function is 4x minus 7. All right, so here's the idea. I know a formula to help me find the slope, but I also want to be parallel to this line. Well, if I'm parallel to that line, then I have the same slope as that line. So let me find the slope of this line. Now, to find the slope of a line, I need to put it into slope-intercept form, where the y is by itself. So I'm quickly going to add the 5x over, so I get 5x minus 21. Being in this form, where the y is by itself, easily lets me see that the slope is 5. So here's the deal. I know the slope of my line is 5. I want to create a line that has that same slope, but I need to figure out what x value would be my point of tangency. So here's what I'm going to do. If I were to plug 5, if I were to, if I knew the point of tangency, I would plug it into my derivative and I should get 5, but I don't know the point of tangency. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my derivative, I'm going to set it equal to 5, because what's a derivative equal? The slope of a tangent line. Well, I already know the slope of the tangent line is 5. So now all I have to do is solve, and it doesn't take a whole lot of work to solve this. In fact, it's actually really easy. And what I just did was I solved for the x. This is the x value of my point of tangency. So the x value is 3. Now, what's the y value? Well, how do you find the y? Well, that's what you function for, right? Derivatives find slope, functions find y. So to find the y coordinate, I'm going to go ahead and plug 3 into my original function. So that's going to be 2 times 9, 3 squares 9, minus 21, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 5. And hopefully you guys can, you know, you need to use a calculator, don't be embarrassed, but that's going to be 18 minus 21 plus 5, and you get 2. So that means my point of tangency is 3 comma 2. And in fact, if we go back to that picture, I'm not going to lie, I spitballed it pretty darn close to 3 comma 2. Sorry, it's hard to see that yellow on top of the white. So that is the point of tangency. So I'm almost done. Now I need to find the equation of the tangent line. Well, now that I know the point of tangency and I already know the slope, all I got to do is put it into my proper form, y minus the y, which is 2 equals 5, my slope, times x minus 3. And right there, ladies and gentlemen, is an equation of the tangent line. So that right there is the equation of the line I drew that is both parallel to the blue line that was given and tangent to my function in red. Pretty nice process. A little tricky, involves a little bit of thought process, but it's not too, too hard. All right, let's do one more. All right. One more, another function, 3 over x minus 2, another line, 3x plus 4y equals 8, and I'm asked the question, find the equation of a line that is tangent to the given function and also parallel to the given line. Oh boy, this might be a little bit trickier because it's a harder function, but you know, we'll see, we'll try it out. Same process. All right, so first thing I do is I always love to take a look at a picture. In red is the graph of... 3 over x minus 2, and the blue line is the line of my, um, my line that I want to be parallel to. Now, if I look at this picture, I can actually see two answers, right? There are going to be two lines that are both parallel. Oh, boy, am I bad at drawing lines. There are both two lines that are tangent to my function and parallel, and oh, my goodness, look over here. There's a Another one. Now, again, I'm really bad at drawing straight lines with my software here. I'm very sorry. But you can see how there's going to be two answers because the, um, you know, rational functions get split up here because of this vertical asymptote. But anyway, I'm going to have two different points of tangency that are also parallel to the given line. Now, the, the solving of this problem will naturally give you those two answers. You don't have to do the work twice. It'll kind of naturally happen. So now that we know the goal, we could go back and figure it out. So once again, the first thing I need is the derivative. Why? Because the derivative is a formula for the slope. So I'm going to need that. Now, go ahead and pause. If you want to try to find the derivative of this function on your own, following the differentiation process, please, I encourage you, but I'm not going to reteach it in this video. 
But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, because I already did the work on my own separate paper, the derivative of this problem is negative 3 over x minus 2 squared. All right, so this is a formula that can find the slope at any given point. So again, the points I'm looking for are here and here. But I don't know those points. But I do know the slope. Because if I'm going to be parallel to this given line, I need the same slope. So what we have to do is, once again, we have to solve for y. That way I could quickly see the slope. So I'm going to subtract the 3x to the other side. I'm going to divide everything by 4, and I get negative 3 fourths x plus 2. Now, that tells me that the slope is negative 3 fourths. Okay. So here's the deal. I don't know the points of tangency, but I do know the slope at those points. So I'm going to take my derivative, and I'm going to set it equal to my slope. And I'm just going to solve for x. Now, I already know there's going to be two answers, and the solving process will reveal those two answers. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. Um, that's going to give me negative 12 on the left, and negative 3 times x minus 2 squared on the right. So now I'm going to go ahead and square that out. x minus 2 squared is x squared minus 4x plus 4. I'm going to go ahead and distribute my uh, negative 3. So I get negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 12. Now I'm obviously going to have a quadratic here because I see a square. And it's always easier to solve quadratics if they're positive. So I'm going to move everything to the left-hand side. That's going to give me a positive 3x squared, a negative 12x. And when I add the 12 over, it's going to cancel with the negative 12. So the negative 12 on both sides are going to cancel out and make a 0. That actually makes it pretty nice. So that I get 3x squared minus 12x equals 0. Scroll down a little bit here, give myself some more room. Now, how do I factor this? Well, this is easy to factor. All i got to do is factor out a 3x, and you get x minus 4 equals 0. Now remember, you can only factor when you have a 0 on one side. Now this allows me to see that there are two possible answers for x. And I'm going to use a different color here. I have x could equal 0, because if this x right here is 0, then the whole thing is going to be 0. Or x could also be 4, because if this x right here is 4, then I'm going to get a 0, and that means the whole thing is going to be 0. So this is what allows me to see my two answers. And I can actually go back to my graph here, and uh, I kind of did a crappy job. Well, this one's not bad. The point should be here at 4, but this point should be here at 0. I did a bad job <laughs> drawing that one. But again, I was just spitballing anyway. The solving process will get you the answers. Now, I also need the y-coordinates. So I have the x is 0, and I have another x as 4. How do I get the y-coordinates? Well, that's what a function does. A function gives you the y-coordinate. So if I plug 0 into my function, I get negative 3 halves. If I plug 4 into my function, I get positive 3 halves. So there are my two points. And what are the slopes? Right now I found these two points of tangency. Here is at 4, comma, 3 halves. Here is 0, comma, negative 3 halves. Now I know the points. Now I need the equation of the lines. But good news, I already know the slope. The slopes are going to be negative 3 fourths. Because all of these lines have to be parallel, which means they all have to have the same slope. All right, so now with this information, I can create the equation of my two lines. This one's going to be y plus 3 halves equals negative 3 fourths times x minus 0. And this one's going to be y minus 3 halves equals negative 3 fourths times x minus 4. So those are the two equations of these two lines that I have drawn very well. That's even worse. Boy, I'm sorry. So those are the two equations of these two lines that are both parallel to the given line and tangent to my function. So it's actually a pretty fun process. At least I think it's pretty fun. And it's a challenge, but you have to understand the big ideas, right? If I'm going to be parallel, I need the same slope. And I'm going to be tangent, well, I need the derivative, because the derivative helps me find the slope of tangent lines. But if I already know the slope, I could back solve for what the point of tangency is. So I like these problems. I think they're pretty fun, but they definitely make you work a little bit. So hopefully you understand and watch the video and then go ahead and practice them on your own.